This revision video is the sixth in my Acids and Bases series for A-Level Chemistry. In part one of pH buffers, we looked at what buffers are, and in part two, we're going to use three different methods to calculate the pH of a freshly made buffer. As we said in the previous video, there are three different ways that we can make a pH buffer. We need to start with either a weak acid, if we're trying to make an acidic buffer, which will buffer pHs below seven, or a weak base, if we're trying to make a basic buffer, which will buffer pHs above seven. And then we also need a salt. So we can achieve this either by adding a solid salt or by adding a solution of that salt or by carrying out a neutralization reaction to actually make that salt within the buffer. So we're going to look at three different styles of calculation based on these three scenarios for how we could calculate the pH of a buffer that we've just made. And then in the next video, we'll look at how we can calculate the pH of that buffer after we add some more acid or base. Now, students are often quite intimidated by the fact that we've got essentially one calculation, how to work out what the pH of a buffer is, and then I'm saying there are three different ways we could get there. And they feel like they won't know which version they're meant to be doing. But the truth is that they're all doing the same thing. So to start with, they're all based on Ka, this weak acid dissociation constant. And if you're not confident with how to write an expression for Ka or how to use it, then you need to look back at video four, which is the weak acids and bases video, and that will give you some help with that. So once we can write an expression for Ka with our hydrogen ion and anion concentrations on the top and our acid concentration on the bottom, then the next step is going to be to work out what the anion concentration is and what the um, acid concentration is. Once you have those, you can use those together with Ka to calculate what the hydrogen ion concentration is. And then once you get to that stage, we're back to just working out pH by taking the negative log base 10. So we'll now look at these three different styles and how they are slightly different from each other. But each one of these is going to follow the same process. Here's a typical example of the first style of question where we're working out the pH of a buffer, where we've been given a solid salt and a solution of the weak acid. So I can tell it's the first style because I've got a mass of a salt in there and therefore I can work out the moles for this directly. The other thing I want to be aware of is that they've given me a Ka value and they've said 298 Kelvin, but that is not information that I need. It's information they've given there so that they're actually being accurate and honest because the Ka for ethanoic acid will be different at different temperatures, but that number is not going to form part of my calculation at all. So as we said, for all of these calculations, the first thing we want to do is have an expression for Ka. Now, if you're specifically asked to write an expression for Ka for ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate, then you would need to write it out fully. But if you've just been asked to work out the pH, then it's absolutely fine if you just want to use A- for your anion and HA for your acid. So as we've said, in this question, we've been given a mass of the salt. I need to be working out what the concentration of the anion is, and to get there, I need to know how many moles of the salt I've got. So my second step is going to be to work out the relative formula mass of sodium ethanoate. Once I've done that, I can use my mass equals Mr. Moles formula to work out the total number of moles. So this tells me how many extra anions am I adding to my weak acid. Now, in this first style of question, the volume, the total volume, is going to be the volume of the acid because I'm not adding any more liquid. I'm just taking my solid salt and putting it into that acid solution that I already have. So to work out the concentration of the ethanoate ion, I'm going to do the moles of the sodium ethanoate divided by the volume of my acid to give me a concentration. And as you can see there, I've needed to convert the volume that was originally in centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed. Now I can go back to my expression. So I can substitute in that I know that the concentration of the anions is going to be 0.04 and the concentration of the acid, which was given in the question, is 0.20. So if I rearrange this, then I can now get it in a form where the hydrogen ions are the subject. So we've now got Ka, which was given to me in the question as 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by the acid concentration and divided by the anion concentration is 8.5 times 10 to the minus 5. Once I've got that, of course, to work out pH, I take the negative log base 10, and that gives me 4.0705 And of course, because this is a pH, I always give it to two decimal places. So my final answer is going to be 4.07.
here's an opportunity for you to have a go at this style of question on your own. So pause the video, work your way through the question, and then we'll go through it together. So just as we did last time, we're going to start out with an expression for Ka. Then we're going to work out what the relative formula mass of the salt is, which in this instance is 98.1. I then use mass equals Mr. Mole rearranged to work out that the number of moles of potassium ethanoate I'm adding is 0.00299. And then I use the volume of my acid, because that's the only liquid in this question, to work out that this means the concentration of my anion is going to be 0.10 moles per decimeter cubed. So I go back to my expression for Ka and I substitute in this concentration for the anion that I've just worked out and the concentration of the acid comes from the question and that's 0.40. So if I rearrange this then I get a concentration of hydrogen ions of 6.8 times 10 to the minus 5. If I take the negative log base 10 of that number then I get a pH of 4.16749107293 and of course because it's a pH I round it to two decimal places. Now these next five questions I'm not going to go through step by step but I'm a firm believer that for buffer questions you just really need to do tons and tons of practice and there aren't all that many questions available out there so if you do want to do some more practice here are five more that I've written to have a go at. If I actually teach you then you don't get a choice you need to do these ones too. So pause the video and then the answers will be on the next slide. So here are your answers for questions one to five and hopefully you're now feeling confident that you can work out the pH of a buffer where the anions have been added in the form of a solid salt. So now let's look at the second style of question. So here's a typical example of this second style of exam question and I can tell that it's not the first because I've been given a volume for my salt solution rather than a mass as we had in the first style and I can tell that it's not the third style because I've got propanoic acid with sodium propanoate so I can see that I've got a salt of that acid I haven't just got a strong base so this is how that I know that it is the second style of question that I'm handling. In the same way as we had in the first style of question, I'm going to start out with an expression for my acid dissociation constant Ka. Now, you might think that this is going to be really quite easy because I've got a concentration for my propanoic acid and I've got a concentration for my salt. But the problem is that those aren't going to be the concentrations after I mix them together. What you have to remember is that when we're adding 20 centimetres cubed of sodium propanoate solution, it's not just sodium propanoate, it's sodium propanoate that's been dissolved in 20 centimetres cubed of water. So we need to work out what the new concentration of the acid is after it's been diluted. And likewise for the sodium propanoate, we need to work out what the new concentration will be after it's been diluted. So the easiest way to use this is to do C1 times V1, i.e. the concentration I had at the start times the volume I had at the start is going to be equal to the concentration I have at the end, which is what I'm actually trying to work out, multiplied by the volume at the end. So the total volume when I've added the two solutions together. So if I rearrange this, I have concentration 1 times volume 1 divided by volume 2, which is my total volume. Here it's going to be 30 centimetres cubed is equal to concentration 2. So if I solve that first of all for my propanoic acid, I can see that the new concentration is going to be 0.15 moles per decimeter cubed. And if I just do a little common sense check, that makes sense. We now have a volume that's three times bigger, so my concentration is three times smaller. If I do the same thing for sodium propanoate, my new concentration is going to be 0.1. So now I can substitute these back into my expression for Ka. And if I rearrange that, I find out that the hydrogen ion concentration is going to be Ka multiplied by 0.15 divided by 0.1, which gives me 1.84 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cubed. And then I just go back to negative log 10 it to get an answer of 4.73. So you can see that a lot of this process is very similar to my first one. But what we now need to do is work out concentrations by using C1 times V1 is C2 times V2 rather than working out the number of moles using masses Mr. Mole and then working out concentration from there. Okay, let's see how you got on. So our first step was to write out an expression for Ka. 
and then we needed to work out our new concentrations for both the oxalic acid and the potassium oxalate. So we use C1 times V1 is C2 times V2, which rearranges like this. And that gives me a new concentration for the acid of 0.05 and for the salt of 0.12. I put those into my equation for Ka and rearrange it to make hydrogen ions the subject, which gives me a concentration of 0.0225 and a pH of 1.65. So again, if you feel a need for some extra practice, then you can pause the video here and work through these five and the answers will be on the next slide, although we're not going to work through them in a step-by-step -step way. So with a bit of luck, you did have a go at those questions and you managed to get pHs of 4.20, 4.17, 3.32, 5.73 and 1.60. Now, just before we go on to the third style of question, I want to show you one other sneaky trick that the exam board could throw in for this second style. And actually, I say that it's sneaky, but if you understand what they're doing, it does make the question slightly faster to solve. It's just that if you don't understand what they're doing, it might make you panic because you think you don't have all of the information that you need. So let's look at this question. We're calculating the pH of a buffer made from equal parts of 0.4 molar ethanoic acid and 0.1 molar sodium ethanoate. As I've done previously, my first step is to write an expression for Ka. And now I want to work out what my concentrations of acid and sodium ethanoate are. And I would want to use C1 times V1 is C2 times V2, except I haven't got any volumes. But I do know that there are equal quantities of them. So if I dissolve something with an equal quantity of something else, I'm doubling the volume. And therefore, I'm going to half the concentration. So actually, even though I haven't been given any volumes, I can take these concentrations and I can half them. So my concentration of anions is going to be 0.05 molar and my concentration of ethanoic acid is going to be 0.2 molar. And then from there, I rearrange it the same way that I did previously and I take the negative log of that hydrogen ion concentration and I get a pH of 4.17. Here's one more of this style of question for you to have a go at before we move on to section three. So pause the video and write down some answers. So hopefully you started out by writing an expression for Ka. You identified that because we're adding equal quantities of these solutions, we're going to halve the concentration, which gives us an expression like this. And actually that cancels out. So we've just got Ka is the hydrogen ion concentration. So we take the negative log base 10 of that to find out pH and we get an answer of 4.77. For this third style of question, where I'm calculating the pH of a freshly made buffer, I'm not going to add the salt to the weak acid. Instead, I'm going to make that salt by reacting the weak acid with a strong base, like sodium hydroxide. So my first step will be to write a chemical symbol equation for this process. Ethanoic acid reacts with sodium hydroxide to make sodium ethanoate and water. And now I'm going to handle this in a very similar way to an equilibrium question from unit six. From the question, I can see that ethanoic acid has a concentration of one and sodium hydroxide has a concentration of 0.1. And initially the concentration of sodium ethanoate is zero because I haven't added any to my buffer. By multiplying concentration by volume, which of course needs to be in decimeters cubed, I can then work out the total number of moles of the ethanoic acid is 0.01 and moles of sodium hydroxide is 0.001. And then my moles of sodium ethanoate is still zero. Now, for every one mole of sodium hydroxide I add, I'm adding one mole of hydroxide ions and one mole of sodium ions. That one mole of hydroxide ions is going to react with one mole of hydrogen ions, which have come from the ethanoic acid, to make some water. And then what's going to happen is that the equilibrium will shift to the right to remake those hydrogen ions. So one mole of ethanoic acid will dissociate to replace that one mole of hydrogen ions that we've lost. And during that process, they'll also make one mole of anions. But we'll worry about that in a second. So here I haven't added a whole mole of sodium hydroxide, I've added 0.001 moles. So that's 0.001 moles of hydroxide ions reacting with 0.001 moles of hydrogen ions and therefore 0.001 moles of ethanoic acid are going to need to dissociate to replace that. So my total number of moles of ethanoic acid will decrease by 0.001. Meanwhile, 
we've just made as kind of a byproduct 0.001 moles of ethanoate ions and left over from my base are 0.001 moles of sodium ions. So that means I now have 0.001 moles of sodium ethanoate. So that's my salt that's going to be part of this buffer. So my moles at the end, we're going to look at the change compared to the moles that we started with. So my ethanoic acid, I now only have 0.009 moles left. Um, and for my sodium ethanoate, it's quite easy because I started with none. So all I've got is what's just come from the sodium hydroxide. And then I can divide each of those moles by the total volume from adding the ethanoic acid and the sodium hydroxide to get a new concentration. So I now have 0.45 molar ethanoic acid and the concentration of my sodium ethanoate is 0.05 moles per decimeter cubed. Having gone through that slightly convoluted process to work out what each of my new concentrations are, I can now follow the same process that I used in type 1 and type 2 questions. I start out with an expression for the acid dissociation constant Ka. I rearrange that to make hydrogen ions the subject. And then having worked out that the concentration of hydrogen ions is 1.53 times 10 to the minus 4, I take the negative log base 10 of that to get a pH of that, which simplifies to 3.82. That was quite a complicated process, so you definitely need to have a go at a few of these on your own. So pause the video here and see if you can work through this one, and then we'll go through the answers afterwards. Just as I did in the previous question, I'm going to start out by writing a symbol equation for the neutralisation process. Propanoic acid reacts with sodium hydroxide to make sodium propanoate and water. And then I need my equilibrium table. From the question, I can see that the initial concentration of propanoic acid is 0.8 and of sodium hydroxide is 0.4. I multiply each of those concentrations by the volume to get the total number of moles. So we start out with 0.008 moles of propanoic acid and we start out with 0.0008 moles of sodium hydroxide. That means that the number of moles of propanoic acid will decrease by 0.0008 moles and the number of moles of sodium propanoate will increase by the same number. That means that after this neutralisation reaction, I will have 0.0072 moles of propanoic acid and 0.0008 moles of the salt. And then I divide each one of these by the total volume. So we've got 10 centimetres cubed plus 2 centimetres cubed divided by 1,000 to put it into decimetres cubed. And that gives me a concentration for my propanoic acid of 0.6 and a concentration for my salt of 0.06 recurring, which here I've just rounded to 0.067. Now I can go through the final part of the process. I write my expression for Ka and I rearrange it to make hydrogen ions the subject. Once I found out that the hydrogen ion concentration is 1.215 times 10 to the minus 4, I take the negative log base 10 to work out the pH and I round that to two decimal places to give me a final answer of 3.92. Finally, if you do want some more practice of these kinds of questions, here are five more and the answers are going to be on the next slide. So pause the video, write out your working and then carry on with the video to see what the answers are. So with a bit of luck, you managed to come up with pHs of 3.31, 3.18, 3.31, 4.84 and 2.38. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you did find that useful. Hopefully you're now slightly clearer on when to do each one of the three kinds of calculation and how to carry each of them out. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more acids and bases videos coming soon.